everyone. Welcome to library. So in honor of Women's History Month, I have chosen another book about another great woman in our history. This is called Margaret and the Moon, How Margaret Hamilton Saved the First Lunar Landing by Dean Robbins, illustrated by Lucy Kinsley. Why were there only daddy long legs, Margaret? Margaret had a solution. She would call some of them mommy long legs too. Why didn't girls play bat baseball? Margaret had a solution. She would join the team herself. Why didn't more girls grow up to be doctors or scientists or anything else they wanted? Margaret had a solution. She would study hard in every subject at school. Reading music, art, and especially mathematics. She learned as much as she could about addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. Margaret's father was a poet and philosopher who talked to her about the universe. She asked about how the planets moved, when the galaxies formed, why the stars shone. She gazed at the night sky in wonder. How many miles to the moon? How many miles does it travel around the earth? How fast does it go? How big round is it? Margaret began solving harder and harder math problems. It was fun working her way through the steps. She liked moving around X's and Y's in algebra. She liked measuring circles and triangles in geometry. She likes studying curves and calculus. And then she discovered computers. Margaret you could use the new invention to answer so many questions about the universe. She experimented with writing instructions or code that told the machine what to do. The code was called software and Margaret called herself a software engineer. She started with something simple asking the computer to add and subtract, multiply and divide. Margaret taught herself to write code that performed more and more complicated tasks. She programmed computers to track airplanes through the clouds and even to predict the weather. She made them do things they had never done before. In 1964, Margaret got interested in an exciting project for NASA. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Their scientists were working on the hardest problem humans ever tried to solve, flying people to the moon. Could Margaret use computers to get the astronauts 238,855 miles there and 238,855 miles back? She convinced NASA's leaders to let her try. Margaret thought of everything that could happen on a trip to the moon. Could the spacecraft go off course? Could it lose power? Would an astronaut make a mistake? Margaret wrote code to tell the computers how to solve these problems. She worked her way through the steps just as she used to in math class. Soon, Margaret became director of software programming for NASA's Project Apollo, leading dozens of scientists. She helped Apollo 8 orbit the moon 10 times. She helped Apollo 9 connect two ships in space. She helped Apollo 10 get within nine miles of the moon's surface. Hello there. With Apollo 11, NASA would finally try to put people on the moon. Had Margaret thought of everything that could go wrong with a lunar landing? She checked her code again to make sure the astronauts were depending on her. And all those stacks of paper that are bigger than she is, that's her code that she wrote. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift off! Apollo 11 rose with a blast of smoke and fire. Margaret followed along from a control room 
and the whole world watched on television. For four days, the spacecraft drew nearer to the moon. The lunar module, named the Eagle, split off to make the landing. Yippee! But with minutes left to go, an astronaut entered a command and the master alarm buzzed. Whoops. The Eagle's computer started performing too many tasks. Overload, overload. Yikes! The control room panicked. The moon landing was in danger. Everyone looked at Margaret. Had she prepared for this problem? Of course. Margaret's code made the computer ignore the extra tasks and focus on the landing. It brought the eagle closer to the moon's surface. Closer, closer, touchdown! The eagle has landed, announced astronaut Neil Armstrong. The control room cheered. Margaret was a hero. Later that night, the eagle's hatch opened. Margaret held her breath. Armstrong took the first step on the moon. The whole world celebrated in front of their te televisions. Margaret walked outside smiling. Her code had helped the astronauts get to the moon, and she knew it would help get them home safely. As always, she gazed at the night sky in wonder. As a child in the 1930s and 1940s, Margaret Hamilton, who was born Margaret he Heffold, wondered why girls and boys weren't treated the same. She wondered about a lot of other things, too. Why is the universe there? What is the meaning of life? How could she do something important when she grew up? Her father always took her questions seriously, talking with her about religion, philosophy, and science. He made her believe she could be anything she wanted, which was uncommon at a time when girls had limited opportunities to pursue their dreams. Margaret liked using her imagination to solve problems, and she often thought, excuse me, and she often thought up unusual solutions that really worked. Her fearlessness led her to become a pioneer in programming computers after she graduated from college. At the time, the job had no name, so she made one up software engineer. She, she was one of the only female computer scientists in the 1950s and 60s. People didn't know much about computers then, so Margaret had to figure them out herself. She got experience by predicting weather for the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. After that, she became the director of software programming for an MIT laboratory working on Project Apollo for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. She was excited about sending astronauts to the moon, and she knew, and her team could help. She knew she and her team could help. In 1969, Margaret became one of the heroes of the Apollo 11 mission. Due to an error on the astronaut's checklist, a switch ended up in the wrong position, and a computer overloaded. It looked like the lunar module might have to turn back, and it might even crash, but Margaret's brilliant programming allowed the computer to zero in on its most important task, landing the spacecraft safely on the moon. Everyone in the control rooms worked together during the crisis to ensure Apollo 11's success. After leaving NASA, Margaret started software companies and invented technology that made computers work even better. In 2003, she won NASA's Exceptional Space Act Award for her groundbreaking contributions to the United States Space Pro Program. It came with a check of for 37200 the largest award to any individual in NASA's history. The Exceptional Space Act Award recognized Margaret's extraordinary scientific achievement, saying that Apollo lives on today, continuing to impact the modern world in part through the many innovations created and championed by Mrs. Hamilton. Wow. That's pretty amazing. So I hope you enjoyed. Oh, and here she is, Margaret with her code. So that illustration wasn't far wrong. It really was as tall as she was. Margaret, here she is at MIT in the command module. 
Thank you for reading with me. Have a great week, everyone.